Hello, friends and family, and welcome to our boring meditation stuff for Monday, October 19th. We're talking about truth, and yesterday we discussed imagination. Today we'll discuss memory. And it's actually, uh, it's well understood, these two ideas, imagination and memory, um, that in many meditation practices, not just anapana or vipassana, they are treated as these sort of enemies um, that for you to indulge in fantasy is obviously uh, an enemy of meditation. Fantasy, you can't meditate on fantasy, so that is not meditation when you're doing that. Um, and similarly, memory. So memory is always dragging you back into the past, away from the present moment. Um, away from the truth of the boring old breath. And memory is, is often, uh, it's often a bit insidious. <laughs> um, it, it's, it's often very dangerous because especially as we start to have some faith that our meditation is representing some truth. Oh, okay, yes, this is my actual breath. Here it is coming in going out over and over again. There, this, this faith in the truth is not some, like, um, it's not fabricated faith. It's, it's, not, uh, it's not faith in a religious sense. It's faith in the sense that, like, I know, well, this is my breath. Like, it can't be anything else, right? Um, I'm not being tricked into believing that this is my breath. I'm not being uh, coerced um, by some external entity that this breath is, oh, it's like the breath is like this. Um, why am I talking like this? So compare other things, right? Philosophies or religions or ideals. This philosophy, this philosophy is correct, right? Or this political view is correct. This is an ideal scenario, right? Or God is like this. God behaves like this. Nature behaves like this. Let me tell you about it. The breath, if you're paying attention to it by yourself, with your eyes closed, probably in the dark, um, <laughs> there's, there's no one to trick you into the breath being something that it's not. Um, so you can have quite a bit of faith as you walk this path, right? Um, that the breath is what it is. It's probably very boring, but at least it's true. Um, the past, we often, even in our mundane lives, we often feel like the past is true to us. I remember what she said to me. <laughs> I remember that interaction. I remember being at the swimming pool and somebody did this. I remember being at the skating rink and somebody did this. I remember going to the store and the cashier treated me this way. Um, this is true, my memory is true, it's accurate. <laughs> And we all know that that's not the case. We all know that we remember things falsely. We remember them colored a certain way. Our memory is fundamentally broken. Um, we are not robots. We, we don't carry a perfect crystalline high resolution version of our memories. And every time we remember them, we also, we go back and damage them, right? We take whatever our current mental state is and we now retrofit it to that memory um, and so the memory gets more and more convoluted every time um, and we understand all sorts of things about memory through neuroscience and psychology um, but we don't really understand how memory works fundamentally we don't understand like what sort of resolution you can get in memory but we know it's not true. And we know that nobody has perfect, true memories. Some people can get, uh, they may have a very strong ability, right? They may have these sort of quote unquote photographic memories and they, they have a memory that's very precise and very accurate and you can test that. Um, but it's still not the truth. And their memory is still locked away in some 
um, goop right <laughs> inside their body. Um, it's it's not even it's not even a CD or a floppy disk or magnetic tape or something like that, right? It is constantly degrading, um, constantly in flux. And so when we get drawn away from our meditation with memory, then we, we run this risk of believing the memory to be true. And if in our meditation we're getting closer to truth, oh, okay, yeah, this is the breath. <laughs> Here it is. There it goes. Okay, the breath. Um, it's possible that if our mind gets pulled away to memories, that we might start believing in those memories a little more strongly as well. Ah, yes, this really happened. Um, and sometimes even in deep meditative states, you'll have this sort of, it's not a hallucinatory experience, but it's more like a dream where like you remember the, the memory not as some sort of thought, but as you're rewatching it. Um, and there we can really believe, oh, this, this was definitely how it was. I remember. <laughs> Based on what? Are you believing that you're remembering this accurately? Your memory of the memory is just as flawed as the original memory, the way that you think about it. No matter how close you get to your memory, it's still fundamentally locked away inside your inner goop. Um, and so we have to keep pulling ourselves away from this um, in the same way that we pull ourselves away from imagination. Imagination carries the risk of what if we start meditating on imagination? And that's a very real thing that we can do. But we can also start meditating on memory. This is called obsession. <laughs> in mundane life, if we start thinking about something that happened in the past over and over and over again, it might happen really fast, it might feel like we're not actually taking our attention off this. This is to make a meditation object of this past thing, which is very dangerous, right? We don't want to get sucked into that and get stuck on some past thing. Extremely unhelpful. Um, and we're just going to strengthen whatever misguided, inaccurate, untrue memory we have of a past event. So this, we're unlikely to do it on purpose. <laughs> I don't know of anyone who meditates on the past. Ah, yes, let me remember childhood and I'll meditate on that for a while. Um, maybe, maybe, maybe somebody does that, but I've never heard of it before. Um, but we can do it accidentally and it, it is... Uh, in many ways, um, more tempting, I think, than imagination, uh, and more likely that we might suck ourselves into meditating on the past accidentally. So we need to be careful of that. The past, our memory of the past, is untrue, and um, we are engaging, actively engaging in dishonesty to invest energy in that during our meditation practice. So um, we'll try to avoid that. And the, the coming topics on truth will be uh, less internal. So these first few were a bit internal, but I'll try to expand uh, outward toward some um, like practical consequences of uh, honesty in our meditation in these next few videos. I hope everyone is taking very good care of themselves. I hope you're all taking good care of each other. And I will talk to you tomorrow about uh, learning Hindi a little bit. All right. <laughs> Goodbye.